Maps I find surprising. England versus South Korea. Okay, England is actually slightly larger than South Korea. That is surprising. 130,000 to 100,000. Our populations, however, are pretty much the same. 56,000 in England and 51,000 in South Korea. But South Korea is more densely populated. But once again, they're not actually that different. Private jets departing Arizona after the Super Bowl. Ooh, that is a lot of private jets. Look at them getting the hell out of there. They're not sticking around. I know that in certain circumstances, private jets are necessary. But these big rich celebrities are definitely using them willy-nilly. Which country has the most naturally armored area on earth? I think it's China. Oh, that's a pretty map. Enhance, enhance. Oh. Yeah, I might agree with you on China. The Himalayas obviously surrounds a lot of the bottom of the country. And then it's all mountainous towards Mongolia as well. It's objectively Papua New Guinea. It's one of the only places in the world where uncontacted tribes still live. Simply because the surrounding mountains are so steep and inaccessible. It has the highest density of unique languages in the world because there are so many segments of land that are cut off from all the other parts. Thousands of tribes have evolved there in relative solitude. Yeah, I suppose that's fair enough. Its global position also does have an impact though. World map of every battle in the last 4,500 years that Wikipedia mentions. What this shows you is that us Europeans just can't settle. We're always faffing about. And what's sad is probably all of the other battles in Africa and the Americas probably wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for the Europeans as well. And what this little fellow was, tiny little speck towards Antarctica. Please let me know in the comments. Language map of Belgium. Oh, so in the north they speak Dutch as it's bordering the Netherlands. And then in the bottom half, they speak French because it mainly borders France. And then this little black bit, they speak German because that's where it borders Germany. Makes sense. Roads of the Old World Czech Republic versus the New World Canada. Whoa. So a lot of Britain's roads are like this in certain areas. But yeah, Canada and USA, they love a straight line, don't they? Do you pronounce the R in arm? England 1950 versus 2016. Wait, hang on. I don't get this. What's the other way of saying arm? Am I pronouncing the R? Arm. 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 Do I have to say arm? I could see people in Cornwall and Dorset maybe saying arm. <laughs> but I don't really get this one. If this is New Zealand, then where is Old Zealand? Well, it's right here in the Netherlands, of course. New Zealand is named after the Dutch province of Zealand. Dutch explorer Abel Tasman was the first European to arrive in New Zealand in 1642. The name New Zealand comes from the Dutch New Zealand. Mm. Potential high-speed railroads in the US and Canada to connect 50% of the population. Well, let's do it. Get cracking, USA and Canada. Prostitution in the USA. So it's been basically illegal everywhere apart from these areas which I did not know. I think it's technically legal in the UK as well but it's just illegal to have like pimps and stuff. Yeah and you're also not allowed to try and get customers on the street just in case there's any prostitutes watching looking for advice. I don't know why I'm still talking about it. <laughs> Africa's population density. You've chosen some very scary colours for this map. We can see big peaks towards Niger and Nigeria. We know that Nigeria has now got one of the biggest populations in the world. And we can see this large dark region here is obviously the Sahara Desert, which is largely uninhabitable. Then around Kenya, Uganda, we've also got quite a lot of people. But I did not realise it was quite so quiet in this area of South Africa and Namibia. Ah, but I guess that makes sense because when you have a look, it looks like Namibia, similar to Sahara, is possibly just too hot. Barely any coverage of Namibia, but I'll We'll have a little look. Oh, yeah, this looks too hot to have people kicking about in it. None of these people look like they're having a nice time. <laughs> How big Brazil actually is. Brazil is bloody massive. Look at that. It spans right across from Edmonton, Canada, all the way down to Mexico City. What's the coverage like? Oh, let's go here in the rainforest. This isn't a rainforest. It's a boy bicycle shop. <laughs> Number of Ukrainian refugees displaced in Europe in February 2023. Obviously, this is really, really sad, but it's incredible to see that Germany and Poland have let in over a million refugees each. Great Britain's numbers very low. So many have posted a map of earthquakes since 1900. That's the top map. And then the bottom map is the actual Earth's tectonic plates. And if we enhance, enhance, there is definitely a pattern. It makes perfect sense. Tectonic plates moving around, bashing against each other. Of course, that's where earthquakes are going to mainly occur. Look at this beautiful line along the Americas. And then you can see it go down here as well. And then in the Atlantic Ocean, you see this curve. And then if we head up to the other map, the curve's there visible once again. And look at that. So interesting. And look how quiet it is in Northern Europe. I experienced a small earthquake when I was in Australia and it was really, really weird. But that's the only time ever. Greatest extent of the Russian Empire. So I know literally nothing about the Russian Empire. But we can see it expanded across what is still mainly Russia. But also dips into Poland, Finland and Alaska. If my trivia is correct, I believe the Russians sold Alaska to the Americans for $10 million. Oh, it was $7.2 million. Ah, oh, 1867. I was close enough. How bad though? $7.2 million. 
dollars. There's not a lot from Alaska. Ah, <laughs> oh, fecal contamination in New York waters, 1985 versus 2020. Wait, is it worse in 2020? No, it isn't. It's improved greatly, but I mean, there's still some kicking up out there, and I don't like it. Ooh, the first world map by Annex Amanda of Malaysia. 610 BC to 546 BC, long time ago. They were a Greek mathematician and geographist. This isn't from 610 BC. This looks like it was done in Microsoft Word. I'm joking. I know it's a recreation. Okay, so they've got Italy shoved in there and then they've kind of just hoped for the best everywhere else. Very interesting though. Obviously, so much of the world wasn't explored at this point. They assume the Nile River went all the way down to the end of the world. They've got the Black Sea in there. I'm presuming some of this is Greece. The scale's not great, but it was a good effort. Annex Amanda, well done if you're watching. Percentage of children born out of registered marriage. 69% of Icelandic children. And then overall, just like most European maps, the numbers go down the closer we get towards Russia and Turkey. 2.8%. That's like basically no one, which is wild. It must just still be very frowned upon in that part of the world. Fertility rates in the world, 1970 to 2022. Enhance, enhance. So what this shows is that most of the world, with some exceptions, are just having less children now. We can see that a lot of the Northern Hemisphere are just having one or two children. Same in South America. America, and then these days there's only really places in Africa that are probably just still struggling with poverty and sex education and sex protection. A lot of Africans are having five to six children, and over in Niger, it's six to seven children. Frodo and Sam's journey if it took place in the United States. How have you worked that one out? How do you work the scale? That is a lot of walking, to be fair. No wonder it took a while. What languages are spoken in Switzerland? I'm sad about this one, because I've been going on about how I've been learning German, and therefore I'm looking forward to going to Switzerland, where like 60% of people speak German. But you guys told me in the comments that the Swiss German is actually pretty different from the German German. So now what am I going to do? Size of Australia versus other countries. Yes, Australia is gigantic. You can see that a lot of Europe is comfortably fit inside that country. Even the big fellas like France, Germany, Spain. I could see that Finland's being kind of bent inwards. I don't know if the Finnish had to say on that one. Italy's boot even gets in there, but you have had to stand on Sicily. What's this about? Luxembourg has been placed very inefficiently. Just squeeze him in up here. He'd have fit there on top of Scotland. Now Moldova feels left out unnecessarily. Flag of Brazil, but each star is scaled proportionally to their state's population in roughly its geographical position. That's a really nice idea. I don't know what the current stars define, but I like this concept. When you look at it, it does make the shape of Brazil. I assume the biggest star here would represent Rio de Janeiro. The United States, all of it. Yeah, people are so used to seeing the continental US on like t-shirts and posters and stuff, but they've got bits all over the place. Alaska, obviously, we've got Hawaii, all of this. Puerto Rico over here, I don't know what a lot of these territories are. I know one of them's Guam, but I don't know the others. You've even included their water right access too. So you can see they control this big chunk here. They spread over quite a bit. The weirdest language according to Europeans. So what did UK say? They said Welsh. That's so mean, but uh, I kind of agree. <laughs> but let's be honest, pretty much every language is weird. To the people that don't speak it and more so the people that also don't live anywhere near. Interestingly though, most countries said Hungarian. I don't even know what Hungarian looks like. Oh, that looks really hard. Yeah, yeah, I'm stressed. Global sunshine hours with the cloudiest, least sunny town in the world, Totoro, Colombia. That is so sad for Totoro, Colombia. Where is it? Oh, <laughs> look at the tiny little fella. It's the only area in the world that shows up as purple. Less than 700 hours. UK is very blue. That's sad to see. Right, we're having a look at Totoro, Colombia on Street View, and we're going to find out if it's cloudy. If there's any sun, I'm kicking off. Right, let's have a look. Ah, oh, it's pretty cloudy. Yeah, <laughs> there is no sun in sight. 50% of the UK's population lives in this circle. Yep, that makes a lot of sense. It includes London and it includes Birmingham, which are the two most populated cities, I'm pretty sure. And then the rest of the UK is basically just fields. As accurate as I could, alligator range map in the United States. Oh, so cool. I want to see an alligator. I love alligators. I'm not sure if I've ever seen one in real life. Fun fact about Florida, it's the only place in the world that naturally has alligators and crocodiles. Whoa, we got a moving map. Temperature time lapse of North America, December 2022 to early January. Well, look at that. Obviously much colder in the Arctic Circle, but all of Canada and a lot of the US getting a lot of heat. And then, oh, it kind of chills out towards January. It's warming up. The 15 largest lakes in the world. From here, they don't look that impressive, but I imagine in person, they're bloody ginormous. Rate of cousin marriages in South Asia. Right, okay. So this is mainly India, but 61% of the population are married to their cousin in this area here? I'm not sure about that one, guys, but who am I to judge? There might be more to it. What people in the UK prefer with their chips by regional breakdown? Yes, now we're getting to the good stuff. Enhance, enhance. <laughs> okay, so Northern Scotland are going with cheese. I can get on board with cheese, absolutely. And then 
this part of Scotland is more of a cheese or curry sauce area, along with this bit as well. Ketchup Scotland, okay, okay. As we scroll down, we have a very surprising number of curry sauces. No way, I don't believe this. Ah, uh, so I suppose it's specific to chip shop chips. Yeah, I suppose that changes it slightly. If I was making chips or maybe getting them from a non-chip shop takeaway, I'd probably just add it with ketchup or with cheese. But to be fair, I can get on board with mayonnaise or salad cream. What I do is I grate the cheese on, let it melt in the oven, then I dip in the ketchup, then I take it out the ketchup, I dip it in the mayonnaise, and then I dip it into my mouth. I was a big fan of chips and mushy peas as a child. Which area is this? Oh, not too much. People are going mad for the curry sauce, it turns out. Well, now we've got to the bottom of that. I think we're going to end off this video. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to Jackson's Geography if you haven't already. I want to get to 2 million, and I'll see you later.